So it's 2015, and the Newcastle Leaguers are about to win their third ever quadruple. Yeah, you heard me, not treble, quadruple. We need to go back and find out how they became the most successful team in the history of British basketball. So let's go on a journey. Before there was the Newcastle Eagles, in the 70s, a team was made just south in the city of Washington. Trying to find information about EPAB Washington wasn't easy. So I did the next best thing and decided to email a uh, Thurosaurus. Hey dad, do you know anything about EPAB Washington? Love, Josh. So Mickey got in contact with a guy called Thomas Woodring, who used to play for EPAB Washington, and the team apparently was owned by a guy called Colin Bentley and was able to secure the sponsorship so they could play at a venue owned by Sunderland AFC. He also said that they also played a big game against the Embassy All-Stars from Milton Keynes, and apparently it attracted the largest crowd in British basketball history with 1,800 spectators. But then decided to move a little further out east to the city of Sunderland. Wait a minute. Newcastle, Sunderland? Tell us, sir. Okay, we need to reflect on this because if the foundations for the Newcastle Eagles began in the town of Sunderland, then you should know that the two cities are rivals, one being Tyneside and the other one being Westside. Now, first of all, Newcastle, fantastic place. If you've never been, you must go. The people there are known as Geordies. Geordies are so passionate. They've got a great football team. They've got great nightlife. Anything you want to do in Newcastle, you can do. It's just that great a place. Sunderland, on the other hand, they're known as Mackens. Their football team is in League One. I think you get the point that Mackens and Geordies don't necessarily see eye to eye. There's also a language. Culturally, this place is amazing. Last night, I went tattoo. Me like watching them Bobby Dazzlers and Newcastle Eagles. TJ Walker went to the court, making a cracking dunk. Get while I mean like Jeremy Ayer was going to do lap the court with a basketball. Taking a three-pointer. I do way Bobby Dazzler him like. Ah, Ralph Blaylock. There's a Bobby Dazzler. Class. Get canny him like. Okay, so if we go back in time, essentially the story begins here in the city of Sunderland. But the team did have like a hundred different names. Okay, okay, okay. That's a bit of an exaggeration, a hundred different names. But in 19 years, there was a basketball team in Sunderland. They did have nine different names. Now, again, that's a lot of names to remember off by heart. So we're going to have to look this one up. So, they started off as EPAB Washington, Sunderland Sunbless, Sunderland Saints, Austin Rovers, Sunderland, Sunderland Maestros, <gasps> just Sunderland, Sunderland 76ers, Sunderland Saints again, and the final name that they had was Sunderland Scorpions. But we're going to look at the seasons 1990 and 1991. But something also of their little man, Russell Saunders, there he is, he made 34 points and... 20 points per game and 40% from the treble line? Are you serious? Seven nine, Sunderland. Three points, Russell Saunders. Super shot from the outside. Leading his team. Eight points for Russell Saunders. 14 points to nine, Sunderland in the lead. There it is. Look at the distance. Beautiful shot. And then there's Clyde Vaughan. 27 points per game and also 40% from the three point line. Wow. Griffiths had virtually an open shot. Five. Clyde Vaughan. Well, that was a fine two points. That'll please Sunderland. That's what he couldn't do in the semi final. They also had this American coach called Coach Craig Lynch. Now, Coach Craig Lynch only coached two teams. Well, one team if you think about it Sunderland in the early 90s, late 80s, and then the Newcastle Eagles, which they went to be in the late 90s on the dawn of 2000. Now, great coach, but what are his accolades as a player? Originally from Toledo, Ohio, played at Furman University. Now, played in the British Basketball League for Brighton, Stoke, Hamill, Bolton, Warrington, and Stockport. And as a player, career average, 19 points per game. Wow, this Sunderland team seems stacked. The guys on the floor, this is what I'm talking about. Show some leadership and get something going out there. Make everybody knows. Come on. Come on. Hard work. Hard work. They had some great British players as well, like Steve Bucknell, who played for the LA Lakers and also played for the University of North Carolina. And they also had Steve Nelson. He's the father of the Great Britain point guard, Luke Nelson. But my favorite British player was this guy, Pete Scannerbury. Why is he my favorite? Well, he's kind of my godfather. So basketball in Sunderland seems to be a success, right? The following year, they won a trophy. But the next three years, they had a bit of a bad habit of finishing in the bottom four. And then in 1995, they finished rock bottom of the league. So what do you do? Well, 
that's exactly what they did. They went to the tune. So the basketball team that once existed in Sunderland is now purchased by the then owner of Newcastle United, the chairman, Sir John Hall. He had this idea that it was great to have many sport teams, ice hockey, rugby, basketball. They were known as the Newcastle Comets. Yeah, it doesn't really sound cool, does it? But the savior, and this is where the birth of the dynasty begins. A man by the name of Paul Blake, who's the current chairman of the British Basketball League, purchased the team, and in 1996 was the beginning of the Newcastle Eagles. I love that logo so much. So life started pretty well for the Newcastle Eagles in the British Basketball League during the late 90s and early 2000s. They moved into the Newcastle Metro Arena that held 7,500 seats. And apparently in 2006, in a game against the Birmingham Bullets, they had to turn away 1,000 fans. Okay, so life's going pretty well for the Newcastle Eagles. They've had some pretty good players. They've had some pretty good coaches. But in 2001, something was about to happen to them that would change the face of the franchise for years to come. And without using all these silly cliches or being too over the top or too dramatic, the best way to put it is it was the coming of the Newcastle Eagles' messiah. And he's fabulous. Flanoy. But just who is fabulous Flanoy? Well, originally from New York City and after his last season at McNeese State, the man signed with the Birmingham Bullets in the British Basketball League. He won two postseason playoff championships with the Bullets. And after that, he went to rival Sheffield Sharks where he was a BBL champion of the Northern Division. So the guy knows nothing but winning, I guess. Great. The Messiah is here. Now it's time for the rest of the Avengers to assemble. So remember they had TJ Walker and they had a very young Andrew Sullivan who just came out of Villanova and was later going to be a 2012 Olympic player for Great Britain. But there was another player that would also change the face of the Eagles franchise and that was this guy. Smith. Straight away. A response from Charles Smith. Opening two for him. After an MVP performance by Charles Smith at the Brighton Centre against the Brighton Bears in the BBL Trophy Final, the Newcastle Eagles and Fabus Fenoy picked up their first trophy. But it wasn't over there that season, and those fans would have more to cheer about. The top two sides in the BBL go head-to-head -head for the ultimate prize in the domestic game. You know, it comes down to one game, a battle within the rating system of who's the best, arguably best basketball team for this season. The following year would be the first of many great years for the Newcastle Eagles because again, they won the BBL trophy, but they also won the BBL cup. They also finished top of the BBL and to no surprise, they won the BBL Playoff Championship. They had completed a quadruple. And when Fab Flanoy was announced by Mike Schaaf to come out and collect the trophy at the championship, he actually did a great thing and allowed TJ Walker, who was a fan favorite, to go out because it was actually TJ's last game for the club. The 2011-12 season, another big year for the club. Let's take a look. They won the BBL Cup trophy and finished top of the league. Oh, and by the way, they also won the playoff championship. Again, second quadruple for the Newcastle Eagles. 2014-15, another big year for the club. Well, they won the BBL Cup. They won the BBL Trophy. They finished top of the league. And well, guess what? We're right back where we started at the beginning of this video. It's 2015. We're at the O2 Arena. And the Newcastle Eagles are seconds away from winning the BBL Playoff Championship and their third quadruple in BBL history. And that's the story of how the Newcastle Eagles became the greatest basketball franchise in the history of the British Basketball League. And after years of commitment and dedication to the Newcastle Eagles franchise, it is amazing now that Fabulous Fenoid is now an assistant coach for the Toronto Raptors in the NBA. And Fabulous, best of luck to you. You really have changed the game here in the United Kingdom. And let's hope one day we'll see you with an NBA championship.